Andrew Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Da 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 dit da 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 at your service to describe something I may have described uh, before on this YouTube channel, but it's certainly worth repeating. Suppose that you want to set up a random wire antenna. Now a random wire differs from a true long wire primarily in the fact that it is not necessarily straight. So the directional advantages and uh, constraints that you get with a true long wire antenna don't occur. You just want a long conductor from your antenna tuner right here and your radio right here uh, to function as a general purpose multi-band antenna. But you fear the fact that such a long wire, one wavelength or more at 160 meters, is somewhere in the order of 550 feet or something like that. It's a long, long piece of metal. And if there's a nearby lightning strike, the resulting electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, can set up pretty dangerous and significant currents in this wire, and quite a voltage as well. It can cause damage to your system, it can imperil you, and it's just generally a bad all-around deal. This antenna, however, doesn't necessarily have to be free at the end. If you provide it with a good RF and electrical ground at the far end, the feed point impedance will change as compared to if this were not grounded, but it'll still perform just as well and in pretty much the same way. The advantage is that this whole length of wire will be solidly grounded so that there can't be any electrostatic charge buildup nor any surge currents to come and wreck your radio. Any surge currents that do arise will go to this good RF and electrical ground. They will prefer the path of least resistance as it were and ideally this resistance should be as low as possible. You might want to add a number of radial wires, although it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference how long they are. The longer the better, I'd say, and the more of them you can get down there, the better. So that you provide yourself with an excellent radio frequency ground as well as an excellent electrical ground. Meanwhile, your radio has to be electrically grounded for your own personal protection, but not uh, so much radio frequency grounded. You will get RF in the shack occasionally as a result of a high radiation zone happening to exist near your tuner, and everything just conspires together to create your high RF situation right here. That's inevitable, but you just want to make sure that you don't run very much of this wire indoors. You want to get it out there as soon as you can from the feed point in the tuner. This, by the way, is an unbalanced antenna, meaning that it is not something like an open wire fed dipole or anything like that that requires a special type of antenna tuner to do its best. All it needs is a good tuner, an excellent manufacturer at a reasonable price of such tuners. A huge variety of them, as a matter of fact, is MFJ Enterprises. Everyone has heard of them. Another good manufacturer a solid manufacturer, although somewhat pricier, 
is one called PAL star. They also make a true balanced antenna tuner, should you ever get interested in going that way. So that is my little lecture for the day. It'll protect you. It'll protect your radio. It'll give you some peace of mind. You won't always have to be disconnecting and grounding your antenna because it will already, in effect, be well grounded. You can just leave it be and sleep tight through those thunder showers until a super bolt comes down from 10 miles away and fries you, your radio, your house, and your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you hope not. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, saying 73 for now, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which in my native language translates to da 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 da. -da.